Hi, on the workbench today, I have a battery charger from Xstar. If you have been following my channel, you will recall that I did some detailed analysis of a 1.5 volt rechargeable lithium ion battery from Xstar a few episodes ago. I'd encourage you to check out that video as I think you might be interested. According to the specs, this VC8S has quite a few tricks up its sleeves. It can charge batteries with either lithium ion or nickel metal hydride chemistries. Although not specified, you should also be able to charge the older nickel cadmium batteries. It supports fast charging. The supplied USB-C PD power brick has a maximum rated power of 45 watts. I think it's specified somewhere here. Yep, you can see maximum 45 watts. And it is XTAR branded and it looks fairly nice. According to the spec, the charger can charge two slots simultaneously with a maximum 3 amps charging current. The maximum current would drop to 2 amps with 4 slots used, and 1 amp when all 8 slots are used. The charger will also work with standard USB supplies with 5 volts. It will just take a lot longer to charge the battery. Besides charging, one feature it supports which you typically don't find in other chargers is the ability to test battery capacities. This implies that it has an electronic load built in for each of the channels. It also has a store mode. In this mode, it basically only partially charges the battery, so it is suitable for long-term storage. Interestingly though, it is buried in the manual that, in storage mode, it can also be used to charge lithium-ion phosphate batteries, which have a much lower terminal voltage. So I assume in this mode, the terminal voltage coincided with the charging voltage of the lithium-ion phosphate battery, which typically is around 3.5 to 3.65 volts instead of the 4.2 volts of a standard lithium-ion battery. There are altogether 8 slots here, and each has this tension mechanism so that it can accommodate a wider variety of battery sizes. Now, the main limitation is the diameter of the battery. As you can see here, probably the largest it can fit is a C cell, as otherwise you wouldn't be able to make contact with the contact here. So here is, for example, a D cell. You can see that it is just too tall to be able to make contact with the positive terminal here. I really like this versatile design. Each slot is independent in that you can mix and match and place different chemistry batteries in any slot. But if you are changing the charging mode or the maximum charging current, it will change for the entire bank, channel 1 through 4 or channel 5 through 8, as we only have two sets of these controls. Now let me actually put in a couple of batteries and do a demonstration here. So let me connect the USB-C input. And you can see that now we're ready to charge the batteries. So the first one let me put in is this 1.2 volts nickel metal hydride battery provided by Xtar. And by the way, Xtar supplied me with these three different size batteries for me to test. One is a AA nickel metal hydride battery. And this one is a 18650. And this one is a 21700. So both of these are of course lithium ion batteries. Let me put one of the batteries in and let's take a look here. So when you put in the battery, it will take a few seconds for it to recognize the battery here. And you can see it recognized this is a nickel metal hydride battery and we begin charging here. Once it starts charging, you can use the mode button to change the display. You can see how many milliamp hours are currently being put into the battery and you can change to see the internal resistance of the battery, which is useful. And of course, you can also see the charging current as we're displaying here. Now, the maximum charging current can be controlled via the current button. You can see currently we're setting at 500 milliamps. Of course, we can change it, cycle it through 250 milliamps, 3000 milliamps, which is the maximum, and so on and so forth. So, which is neat. Of course, the maximum charging rate also depends on the battery. So not necessarily when you set it to 2 amps, it will charge at that current. So let me put in another battery here. So this is a 18650. And let me put in, in the other cell here. So you can see we detected the battery is a lithium ion and it started charging as well. And of course, we can actually put this in a different bank. So let's put it on channel 5. So this one then would be controlled by this side. And let me just put in another battery here. So this is a 21700. And you can see that 
It took a few seconds to recognize the battery, and now we begin charging. To switch the charging mode, you just need to press and hold the mode button, and you can get to, let's see, now it's a grad, this is actually the capacity mode, and then we can press it again. You can see we have now entered the storage mode. Now, I have to say the mode display here is a little bit confusing. For example, if I press hold it again, it goes to the current mode, which is the charging mode. In charging mode, it says current. In my opinion, it would be much more appropriate if it says CHRG or CHG, which corresponds to charging. And similarly, in capacity testing mode, it says grad for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, it would be better if it says something like CAP, cap. That would be far more intuitive. The capacity measurement mode is very slow, and it is mainly due to the slow discharging rate. I did some testing before, and I think the discharge rate is at roughly 0.1C. Adding in the charging cycle to test the capacity of any battery, it would take at least 15 or 16 hours, as the battery has to be first fully charged, capacity tested, and then be topped off again. As you can see, the tested results largely match what is stated on the battery for the battery capacity. All right, let's open it up and take a closer look. Now, my guess is that the screws are probably behind these rubber feet, so we'll have to peel them off here. So let's take a look. Looks like they are just stuck on. see yep we have screws behind that okay we'll have to do it for all these rubber pads here as you can see we essentially have two halves and the circuitry is largely symmetrical by the look of it we have eight of these mosfets four for each channel and my guess is that these are probably configured as electronic load to control the current through the battery during discharging. If you look closer, let me just zoom it in, you will see that we have a 0.75 ohm resistor for each channel. And these are the current sensing resistors. Of course, all the magic is controlled by these microcontrollers, one for each channel. Unfortunately, but not surprisingly, the markings on these microcontrollers have been etched off so we don't know exactly which microcontroller they're using here. Towards the middle here, you can see we have this inductor, which is a dead giveaway. This is a DC to DC converter. Now, I'm not entirely sure what it's doing here, but we also have eight of these smaller shunt resistors. By the look of it, these are 50 milliohm each. So this clearly is doing some current measurement at this end. Presumably, these are for measuring the charging current, perhaps, because the charging current can be quite high as high as 3 amps for each channel. Towards the far right, you can see there is a HUSB 238, which is a USB power delivery controller. And that's not surprising, as the charger does support USB PD protocol. And I'm pretty sure there's additional circuitry at the bottom side of the board. I will have to remove these screws in a little bit. But uh, right now, let's take a look at the mechanism for the battery holder here. So you can see these are the battery holders. And if I move this, you can see here, by the look of it, it is making contact with these tabs at the bottom. So we can move this. And of course, here is our spring that I can put it in place. And you can see here that this is how the mechanism works. And of course, the tabs are held in by the molding on the other side of the cover here. And these are essentially used to hold in the tab while you're sliding the contact here. Pretty neat. And, oh, this whole tab seems to be connected. Let me just remove these spring holders here. And it still does not quite 
open up. I think I'm just going to have to uh, flip it and let's take a peek inside here. All right, I managed to wiggle it out a little bit. Of course, all the parts fell out. I have to reassemble them a little bit later. But anyway, you can see here on each of the channel, we have a inductor and uh, there's some circuitry around it. Presumably that's for charging. The chip here, which is marked as BD2L00, as you can see in this close up picture here, I cannot find any information about this chip, but presumably that's controlling the charging circuitry here. And from the silk screen on the PCB, you can see this was indeed made by XTAR, and here is some revision information of that PCB. And here's a peek at the LCD board at the bottom. You can see we have two LCDs, one on each side. Of course, the markings on the chips are also etched off, so we don't know what they are, but we can see that the connection is done via these pins, so this is clearly a serial-based protocol. All right. I hope you enjoyed this review and teardown video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will catch up with you next time.